Plant leaves, or collectively foliage, are the most prominent part of a plant. Blooms and fruits come and go, but the leaves stay. Well, most of the time anyway, but we'll get to falling leaves in a future video. Leaves can be really big or really small, thick or paper thin, hairy or smooth, dull or shiny, they can have interesting patterns or can be plain, and sometimes they look nothing like your typical leaf. And if you're still wondering, conifer needles and scales are leaves as well. The leaf is attached to the stem by a stalk called a petiole. The petiole is useful in positioning the leaves so they don't shade each other too much and all of them get enough light exposure. Petioles can take on various forms, such as the thick and fleshy petioles of rhubarb or the flattened petioles of acacia forming phyllodes. Not all leaves have petioles, though. In some plant species, the leaves are attached directly to the stem. We call these types of leaves sessile leaves. At the base of a leaf you might sometimes find stipules, a couple of small projections that vary in their appearance. For example, they might look like glands, scales or spines. Continuing up along the petiole, you will arrive at the main part of the leaf, the leaf blade or lamina. The size, shape, texture, color and overall look of the leaf blade play a key role in species identification. When the leaf blade is simple and not divided, we call it a simple leaf. On the other hand, if the leaf blade is divided into multiple leaflets, we call it a compound leaf. Sometimes it might be confusing to know whether you're looking at a simple or a compound leaf, but don't worry, we'll cover this in a separate video. The leaf blade has an upper surface, the adaxial side, ad meaning towards the stem, and a lower surface, the abaxial, ab meaning away. These terms are especially handy for when you go through a key identifying a plant. Most of the time, these sides look very different from each other. Across the leaf blade is often a spreading network of veins. The patterns they create and the arrangement in which they're branching, or not branching, is referred to as venation. Veins serve as a physical support for the leaf, creating a skeleton, but mainly they help circulate water and nutrients into and out of the leaf. Identifying the venation pattern might also be helpful in determining the plant species. Finally, at the tip of a leaf is, you guessed it, the leaf tip, often called the leaf apex. So why do plants have leaves? Plants are autotrophic organisms, also known as producers, which means they have to make their own food within their bodies. The opposite of producers would be consumers, defined as heterotrophic organisms. And here you can imagine, for example, animals, which gain their nutrition from outside resources and are not able to produce their own food in their bodies. Not all plants are autotrophic, though. For example, plants that live as parasites obtain nutrition from outside sources, usually other plants. But those are exceptions, so let's focus on a vast majority of green plants. Now that we know plants have to make their own food, let's focus on the main plant organs that perform this task, the leaves. All chemical processes involved in plant food production happen mostly in the leaves. This process is called photosynthesis. You've probably heard about photosynthesis and I won't go into the details of it in this video, but definitely let me know if that's something you would like me to explain in a future video. Photosynthesis is a chemical process in which light, carbon dioxide and water are absorbed or taken up by a plant and processed to create energy or food for a plant in the form of sugars and starches. At the same time, oxygen gas is produced as a byproduct of this process. Imagine the leaves as little food factories. To be able to perform photosynthesis, they need to capture light. Getting enough light is crucial for a plant's survival. This is why you might see your house plants turning all their leaves in one direction towards the light source. They want to maximize their light exposure. Thin, broad leaves have a large surface area 
and they are able to absorb the light most effectively. Whereas in these spherical leaves of Senecio, only the surface cells receive enough light to be able to undergo photosynthesis. The light is captured by organelles, structures inside cells, called chloroplasts. Chloroplasts are most abundant in leaves, although they occur in smaller concentrations in other plant parts as well. This is where photosynthesis happens. Chloroplasts contain a pigment called chlorophyll, which gives plants their green color. If you see a leaf that shows different colors than green, it is most likely thanks to the presence of other pigments that are masking the green color of the still present chlorophyll. This is called variegation. Sometimes leaves have white blotches and that might actually be caused by a lack of chlorophyll. Light absorption for these leaves might be a little more difficult. The veins in leaves serve as transport pipes for water and the products of photosynthesis, ensuring that the nutrients reach all parts of the plant. To receive and release gases, plants have developed specialized pores called stomata, which cover the leaf surface. Stomata also allow water to evaporate, which can be dangerous for them if this happens too much. In dry, sunny environments, plants have developed mechanisms to avoid excessive loss of water. One common mechanism is having a waxy leaf surface, or cuticle, which helps to retain water inside the leaf. The shiny surface also helps reflect away excessive sunlight. Leaves in these environments also tend to be smaller in size and sometimes they're completely missing. Think of cacti. Most cacti have reduced or completely eliminated their leaves to prevent water loss. In fact, many of them have modified their leaves into spines which serve as protection from predators and provide some extra shade to reduce water loss from the stem. And what about photosynthesis? In almost all cacti, such as the saguaro pictured here, the stem takes on the role of photosynthesis. Leaf modifications are extremely common and it's not just spines that they modify into. Tendrils are also modified leaves, serving as climbing organs. You can see this in vines such as passion flower. In the pitcher plant, the leaves are modified into a pitcher, an insect trapping device. Leaves might also play a role in reproduction, such as in ferns where spores are produced on the underside of the leaves. Kalenko, commonly known as mother of millions, develops little plantlets on its leaf margins. As you can see, there is a lot more going on with leaves than you've probably ever imagined, and we've only scratched the surface. If you want to learn more about how to recognize different shapes and types of leaves, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.